Good morning, everybody. Welcome to chapel. Today is a great day because the sun is shining, the birds are singing, it's going to be warm, and most importantly, we are here to sing God's praise and hear his word. Today, we are going to hear from our friends at Norfolk Rescue Mission after a little while. That is where our March offering is going, so they're going to share a little bit about what happens over there when the time comes. But until then, we got some stuff to do. Let's start with our song. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the sky and all that is in them. He created Adam and Eve to care for them. Mankind fell into sin and stopped serving others. God made a promise to forgive their sins and renew them through his Son. As a new creation, we are now free to love one another just as Christ has loved us, laying down his life for us. 
but we continue to fall short of God's glory and fail to serve others. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is a gift of God, not a result of work, so that no one may boast. Created in Christ Jesus. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe. At this time, we're going to collect our offering. So, acolytes and ushers, will you please go get the plates? Ush, our offering, as I said, is going to Norfolk Rescue Mission. We will hear from them in just a short few minutes. Uh, but for now, let us sing. yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Jesus. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Please join me in Luther's morning prayer. I thank you. May God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit direct our days in his peace. At this point, I'm going to call up our friends from Norfolk Rescue Mission. They will come up here and you will give them your best listening ears because they got some stuff they're going to share. So, gentlemen... I'll let them introduce themselves. Everybody say, good morning. Good morning. No, say, good morning. good morning. Say it with a smile. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Thank you. And uh, this is my friend. I'm Chaplain John. I work at the Rescue Mission. And this is my friend, Raynell. Um, I'm not fluent in Spanish, but uh, Raynell is, so I'll let him say good morning to you in, in Spanish. In Spanish? Okay. Muchas gracias. Santin, speak Spanish? Oh, good. Mi nombre es Raynell. Eh, trabajo en Rescue Mission llevando el Evangelio a las personas que están en, la cárcel, en las cárceles. Eh, me siento feliz por venir ante una congregación tan hermosa de niños. Es lo más hermoso en la creación, los niños. Que Dios los bendiga. Uh, I don't speak, I don't uh, speak uh, fluent Spanish. My Spanish is muy poquito. But uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about another aspect of the Norfolk Rescue Mission that you may or may not know much about. Um, but first of all, if it's okay, I wanted to have... Uh, could I call on you to read a couple of verses for me? Since we already know that you're able to uh, speak well, you want to come up here for me? I didn't. I didn't warn her about this. There's two two verses. Two verses I wanted to start us off with. Um, so hold that those white papers and. So there's this one and then... Okay. Thus says the Lord, Let's, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. Okay, before you read that one, Quick question, if you're listening to, that, to those verses from Jeremiah, if a person is to boast or maybe brag a little bit, if a person is to boast, what is it okay to boast about? Somebody here in the green sweatshirt here. Say it louder. Jesus, yeah. 
Okay. Good answer. Um, and then I got one more verse here for you to read. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that verse from Jeremiah was telling us that um, we need to understand and know the Lord. And we can boast if we know the Lord. So let me, let me ask another quick question. Um, well, two questions. And in your, in your morning liturgy here, the answers were already there. But first of all, who created every one of us here? Who created us? Anybody? Just say it out loud. God did. Okay, next question. Um, how, how do we, or, or how do any of you here le learn about who God is and what his plan is for us and, and about his salvation and his forgiveness? Right here, what's, how do we learn about that? I didn't hear you. By going to church, okay. In, any other ways in the purple? Reading the Bible, okay. I want you to think about something. Um, how many, there's a lot of kids here. Uh, maybe an adult can help me. How many, how many students are enrolled in this school? 160, wow. Um, I have a reason for bringing that up, but let me first um, continue with another question. Um, the answers to how, how we learn about God is by coming to church and, and reading his word, I think is what the other answer was. Um, now, this is going to explain to you what we're here to talk about, what Raynell and I are here to talk about regarding the rescue mission. We have a a ministry that goes into several of the county jails in the area. And so how, it, you know, here we're privileged to be able to come to church and read the Bible, maybe have devotions at home with your mom and dad. But what about the people, what about the inmates? What about the people that are sitting in the county jails? How, how do they get to learn about who God is in, in the pink here, yeah. So, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, right. So, so, so she said by us going there, and that's, that's what our jail ministry does, is we have a team of about 12 volunteers, and Raynell here is one of my valuable volunteers, and he's especially valuable because Sometimes we go into the jails and the inmates don't speak much of any English and I can't communicate very well with them. So, so Raynell um, is very valuable to me and our jail ministry. Um, I was asking how many kids are here, but just, uh, let me see the yellow sheet. Um, we regularly on, on a weekly basis, we go into three, three county jails our team does to, to visit inmates. Uh, we do have some female um, members of our volunteer team that visit the female inmates, and we have a number of, of male volunteers that visit the male inmates. Um, anybody have an idea how many inmates there is right now in the Madison County Jail? That's a good guess. It, and it's, um, there's 65 right now. There's uh, 57 males and eight females. Um, and then we also regularly visit the Pierce County Jail and there's roughly about 10 males in there. And the uh, Antelope County Jail, I don't have the number exact right now, but I think there's about 25 inmates in there. Uh, a few women and mostly men. 
But anyway, we, we go into those jails every week and we want them to have the opportunity that all of you have to hear and learn about our Lord God and his plan of, of salvation and, and his plan of forgiveness and how it is that we can be made right with God through faith in the Lord Jesus. Um, so that's, that's the main purpose of our, our jail ministry. We don't, I always, when I go in and I meet a, uh, a new inmate that I haven't met before, I always, I always uh, make it clear to them that I'm not there to be their defense attorney or to take sides with them or the sheriff. Um, we are there as representatives of, of the Norfolk Rescue Mission to try to encourage them, to pray for them, to study the Bible with them and encourage them to study the Bible themselves. Just yesterday, uh, Raynell and I were in the Antelope County Jail and we met with, was it six guys, I think? And uh, I was encouraging them. I mean, it's great in the jail when we see, and this is an encouragement for everybody here too. It's great when the guys in the jail are voluntarily coming to our meeting to read and study the Bible and to pray and encourage each other. Those are great habits for these inmates to get into. But I, I really encourage them to intentionally decide before they get released from jail, which sometimes is weeks or many months away, that when they get out of jail, they need to, with God's help, continue with those habits. Because so, so often, um, a lot of these inmates that we visit, you know, maybe when they were growing up, they were, not all of them, unfortunately, but maybe some of them were blessed to be even in a Christian school when they were growing up. Or maybe they were raised by Christian parents. And that's awesome. But the sad thing is, and I'm guessing many of you know people like in this situation too, but a lot of people that are in those jails, they might have been raised with an exposure to the church and the Bible, but maybe the busyness of life or uh, a broken family or something got them out of the habit of going to church and spending time in God's word. And I can't tell you how many times <laughs> we, we meet people at the rescue mission and in the jail that they know who God is, many of them. They know what Jesus did for them, but they've become so disconnected and their life has gone into a tailspin of lots and lots of trouble. And then they get arrested and put in jail. So, so pray for these inmates, the men and the women. Pray also for the, the law enforcement. Pray for the, uh, the officers and the dispatchers and the sheriffs. And pray for our team that we can continue to get into these jails and, uh, and encourage these, these people. Um, it's an important thing. And um, I'm going to... I'm going to just say a short prayer, and then I'll have Raynell pray in Spanish. Father God, we thank you for this group of, of children here. God, I pray that you would continue to draw them to yourself. And I pray, God, that they would uh, continually be in your word and to seek you for wisdom and, and for salvation and forgiveness. God, we thank you that you are, you are patient with us in the many days that we don't um, follow your will. God, thank you for, for loving us and sending your son Jesus to die for us. And most importantly, God, we thank you that he is not still in the tomb, but he's sitting at the right hand of God the Father to, to intercede for, for us with God the Father. And he hears our prayers and he answers our prayers, and I thank you for that. And I'll have Raynell pray in Spanish. Gracias te damos, bendito Dios, bendito Padre Celestial, por esta oportunidad tan hermosa que nos das 
para estar en presencia de estos hermosos niños que son el futuro del mundo. Yo te pido en el nombre de Jesús que los bendigas, que los santifiques, que nos libres del mal. Porque la palabra de Dios nos enseña que el enemigo está dispuesto a tomar parte de ellos. Vemos en las escrituras que un hombre trajo a su niño que estaba poseído por un demonio que lo echaba al fuego, lo maltrataba. Jesús le preguntó, ¿cuánto hace que le sucede esto? Él dijo, desde niño. Entonces yo te pido, Padre Celestial, que bendigas todos estos niños que están aquí presentes para que los libres del mal, para que vayan creciendo en el conocimiento de tu palabra. Bendice estos niños, Señor, y a sus padres. Muchas gracias te damos, Señor Jesús, porque tú eres nuestra esperanza de salvación. Gracias te damos por ellos en el dulce nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amén. Thank you, everybody. I'm sorry for holding you late. Let's give those guys a great big thank you for being here today. ST! If you don't know Spanish, uh, he was praying for the beautiful children in this room. He was thanking God for the future that you guys have and uh, praying that Jesus would bless you take away and defeat all the evil so that your word can that his word can reign in your lives so that was an amazing prayer in spanish that you guys got to hear i loved that so much mr onan the microphone thank you okay we had a couple students caught being good please come on up bryce and smutney for asking a friend to be in a group with him jackson ernster for volunteering to help a classmate Bella Huntley for holding the morning door. Ty Toltzman for holding the door in the morning. Isaiah Blake for being a great leader at musical practice on Monday. Presley Wolf for being a great leader at musical practice on Monday. Xander Larson for being a great leader at musical practice on Monday. Presley Colm for being polite to an upset friend. Charlotte Hegeman for helping a friend pick up a spilled tray, Amaya Yover for helping to clean up a mess in the lunchroom, McKenna Schnitzler and Noah Weber, and Charlotte Hegeman for helping clean up a mess in the lunchroom. It was a really big mess because they all got the same one. And Charlotte. Okay, help me thank these students. S.T. You guys can have a seat. Uh, thank you, praise team, and uh, ladies and gentlemen in the back, and Jaden for doing this for like the eighth time this year or so. Um, thank you to our student leaders for leading us today. ST! I think my only other announcement is today, after school, our basketball team's taken off. We've mentioned that quite a bit. We're going to be dismissing the same way we usually dismiss Absolutely. Um, in just a minute, we'll be dismissing. We're going to go right over to the gym. Um, so instead of going back to the classrooms, that's where we're going to be heading. We also have third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. We have 12 spelling bee participants that are going to go uh, compete today. Uh, we're going to pray for them really quickly. Hands, heads, and eyes. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for the unique ways that you've created us. And you've created us to serve. We thank you for all the different talents that you've given us, Lord. And as we sang last night at the musical, sometimes we may seem average, we may seem plain, but God, you've created us 
exactly the way we're supposed to be for a reason. Lord, we pray and thank you for our super spellers that will be competing today. We pray that you would bless them to use their talents to glorify you, that they would have success, and that one way or another that they would point to you with great sportsmanship, that they would set an example for those around them. And all God's children said, could we please have our acolytes and ushers come on up?